Hey, algebra students. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about slope intercept form as the form that we use to write most equations. And I'm just going to tell you, there's other forms for writing equations. The slope intercept form is the most useful by far. There are some niche uses for other forms for variable equations, but this one is the one that is easiest to graph, easiest to work with. At a glance, you know exactly what's going on with your equation. Slope intercept form is represented with this equation, y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. And don't ask me why m means m -m -m slope and b means y-intercept, <laughs> but that's just the way it is. Uh, and usually, okay, so when you need to write an equation in slope intercept form, notice that down here, you need to write the equation of the line in slope intercept form write the equation of the graph line in slope intercept form. What you need to do is make sure that you leave y and x as variables in exactly the position they're in in this circle. But m, you need to figure out and replace with a number. And b, you need to figure out and replace with a number. m is a slope, so all you need to do is figure out what the slope is. B is the y-intercept. You need to look where it crosses the y-axis. All right, let's do some practice problems with slope-intercept form and see just how difficult it is to use this concept. Letter A, y equals 0.7x minus 4.9. We need to determine the slope and the y-intercept. Well, the slope is simply the number that's multiplying the x. So in letter A, my slope is... 0.7. I'm just going to record exactly the number. If it was negative 0.7, I write negative 0.7. In this case, it's positive 0.7. The y-intercept is whatever number is a constant at the end. This time it's negative 4.9 because it's minus. So I'm going to write negative 4.9. That means it's going to cross the y-axis 4.9 below the origin. All right, let's take a look at letter B. Letter B, we've got some work to do. We need to rearrange this equation so it is in slope-intercept form. So I need to get y on a side by itself. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 9 to both sides of this. So if I, oh, I'm sorry, add 9x to both sides of this, that'll get this 9x off the left-hand side, the negative 9x, and move it to the other side. So I'm going to rewrite it. The first time I write it, I'm just going to have added 9x to both sides equals 9x plus 12. And now I need to divide both sides by 3. If I divide the left side by 3, well, I just get y equals. And then uh, on the right side, uh, it's going to be 9x divided by 3, which is 3x, plus 12 divided by 3, which is 4. I need to make sure I divide everything by 3. If I divide it, it's three. Okay, now I've got now I've got it. Uh, I can say that the slope is three, the number that's multiplying the x, right? That's the slope. And then the y intercept is positive four, because it's three x plus four. And then if I wanted to graph the line, it'd be really easy to graph. All right, now the next step asks me to graph each line using the equation that is in slope intercept form and c is in slope intercept form d i need to rearrange and put it in slope intercept form first all right let's take a look at c okay so here i have a graph and a bunch of points that i can put on the graph and i need to graph the line y equals three over fifths x plus zero okay there's no plus zero here, but we can assume there's a plus zero. Anytime I don't have a constant at the end, that means that this graph crosses at the origin. Okay, so I don't actually have a constant because this is plus zero. My y-intercept is zero. And then uh, now that I've got my y-intercept, I can start graphing using the slope. This has a rise over run slope of three over five, up three over five up three over five. So from my first point, I need to go up three over five. And there's my next point. Uh, from there, I can go up three over five. There's a point. Now I could graph it from here, but uh, I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna go down three, back five. That's the other way I can go in case I run out of room to go up three over five. Down three, back five. And you can see that as long as I follow this slope rate, 
um, I get this nice linear looking pattern. And all I need to do is in the end, connect this with a line with an arrow on both sides. Because remember, any point on this line is a point that is a solution uh, to this equation. Um, now, if I were doing this on a piece of paper for homework, I do it on an actual graph and then I would make sure that I use the straight edge to connect the points and make sure it's as straight as possible. Uh, this one is okay. Now let's do letter D. This is letter C. Let's put letter D on the same graph. Letter D has some work that needs to be done because right now it says X minus 4Y minus 20 equals zero. I need to get Y on a sign by itself. So what am I going to do? Well, I know that negative 4y equals, I'm going to subtract x from both sides, negative x. I'm going to add 20 to both sides, plus 20. Now I need to divide both sides by negative 4. That's going to give me y equals, let's see, negative x divided by 4 is, let's see, negative x divided by negative 4 is, well, negative divided by negative is a positive. It's going to be 1 fourth x plus and then 20 divided by negative 4. Actually, it's going to be minus 5. All right, so this one is 1 fourth x minus 5. That means that I'm going to start at negative 5, okay? So my first point is going to be here at the y-intercept on the y-axis. This tells me where it crosses the y-axis. It's negative 5. And then from there, I have to go up 1 over 4. One, four, 1 over 4, rise over run, up 1 over 4, up 1 over 4. Perfect. And then if I want to go the other direction, down 1, back 4. There we go. And then uh, down 1, back 4 again. Down 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Perfect. All right. And that is how we graph it. Now I'm going to connect all these points with a line. And there I have it. Notice that it has the right slope up one over four, up one over four, up one over four. And it crosses at the y-intercept, crosses the y-axis at negative five, like it should, just like my previous one crossed at the y-intercept. When there is no y-intercept in your equation, it needs to cross at zero. Okay. Let's move on to letter E. Write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. This one's easy. All I need to do is figure out the uh, slope and the y-intercept. The only thing that makes this one a little tricky is that this axis counts up by twos, not by ones. But let's just let's just write out. So the general equation is y equals mx plus b. I'm not allowed to have an m or a b in my final answer, though. I need to change the b out for the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 4. It crosses the y-axis at 4 positive four, not negative four. Okay, so plus four. And then the slope, well, this appears to be going up two over two, up two over two. Two over two is the same as one over one, which is just one, or just x, right? Because one x is just x. Y equals x plus four is my equation. Let's do the same thing for letter F, right? The equation of the graphed line in slope-intercept form. I'm just going to start with my general y equals mx plus b. But in this case, b, it crosses the um, y-axis at negative 2. This counts up by 2. That's negative 2. And actually, over 3 is over 6, right? Because it's not just counting by 1. It's 2, 4, 6. Sorry. Down 2 over 6. Down 2 over 6. Well, that's negative 2 over 6 for my slope. Uh, and that simplifies to negative 1 over 3. So this is going to be negative one-third x because it goes down one over three. It's going to be negative slope, negative one-third x minus two. All right, and then lastly, we're going to be solving this problem that's a real problem. And what we're looking for in these real problems is any kind of rate. The rate is going to be my slope. Okay, let's take a look and see if we can find a rate. Monica's family will be renting a car on their vacation. The car rents for an initial fee of $50 plus 50 cents per mile. 50 cents per mile is going to be a rate. So our slope is going to be 0.5 or one half, which is up one over two, up one over two. Write a linear equation in slope-intercept form to represent the situation and then graph it. 
Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of work. First of all, I'm going to say y equals mx plus b, where my slope is going to be my rate. So I'm just going to write y equals the rate is 0.5x plus b. Now let's think about this thing for a second. If my rate is dollars per mile, dollars per mile, then my x value is in miles and my y value is in dollars. Um, if my y value is in dollars, that means that my b value also has to be in dollars. Is there an initial, an initial amount of dollars that I'm paying before I pay per mile? Yes, 50. So it's going to be $50 plus an additional 50 cents per mile, where X is the number of miles and Y is the total cost. Let's just take a look at this. Of $1 for every two miles. Okay, so I'm going to put one dot at my Y intercept. And then I'm going to think this through here. Let's see, I go up one over two, up one over two. Am I ever going to get up to the next $10? Well, how many miles would I have to go to have to pay $10? Uh, I would have to go 20 miles to have to pay $10. So let's do that. Let's, uh, we're going to get rid of our scale on the bottom here too. And we're going to count up by twos on the bottom as well. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Oh, I guess it's all the way on the end. 20. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Okay, now, I know that um, 60, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 20 is going to be a point. Also, since I'm counting up by fives, I know that, um, let's see, 10, 55 is going to be a point. 10, 55. And that's my graph. So I don't have to make a really fancy, drawn out, complicated graph. I could just connect these three points together and voila, there is my graph. All right. And that is how you do these. Make sure you solve your slope intercept form problems one through 30 for next time.